God bless you. My name is Phil Fisher, and after making a small little contribution of groceries, I actually got access to this beautiful, epic place in the middle of the desert. It's on the res in the Mojave Desert, and here at the Mojave Desert, you really feel the Spirit of God. It's actually very, very beautiful, and you want to come to places like this when there is absolutely no one here. In the 1850s, we wouldn't have wanted to be here but I'm here today to preach the word of God to you. My wife and I have a small little church called Jesus Lives in a small little town in Washington state. And we don't have private jets and we don't have paid staff and we don't have fancy lights and all that jazz. But what we do have is the love of God. And I'm gonna preach you a good word today from someone who doesn't take any money for preaching the gospel. My wife and I work very hard so that we can supply all the needs to all the new believers that we're bringing in on Thursday nights. And that means pizza, Azell's chicken, pagliacci's, all kinds of cool stuff that you from Seattle would know about. Tonight I wanna preach about something very, very amazing. I used to live the life of a rock star, an internet entrepreneur. I've been many things. I used to drink a fifth of Jack Daniels every day. I used to smoke a bag of weed every day. I used to occasionally use cocaine. I used to lie to get ahead. But everything changed when I met a beautiful woman that led me to Christ. And when she led me to Christ, I felt the Holy Spirit wash over me and give me the ability to reveal to me that my fivefold gifting was evangelism. Since then, I have decided to dedicate my whole life to caring for our small little church. So the word that I'm going to preach you tonight is a good word, and it's called seasons. And I hope you like it. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8, where it talks about seasons. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh. I just want you to know that I love every single one of you and this message is for you tonight and I hope that all of you pay attention. And there were many mornings that I would wake up in the arms of a stranger and I would think that that was love. I would think that that was all there was to this crazy world that we live in. But there's something going on in the world today and you can't put your finger on it. You don't really know what it is. It's crazy. I may not be a fancy preacher, but I'm going to preach to you a word tonight that's beautiful and amazing. And it's called seasons. And I hope that you like it. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8, where it talks about seasons. There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to search, and a time to give up, and a time to keep up, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Read that scripture as many times as you can. The seasons of life, aren't they amazing? Just like the planet we live on, doesn't matter where you are, there are many different seasons, but there are spiritual seasons too. And they're just as important. And many of you that have been following Christ know what I'm talking about. Even some of you new believers know what I'm talking about. There's good seasons, there's bad seasons, productive seasons, and seasons of great decline. Seasons of mourning, Seasons of laughter, seasons where there are more obstacles, it seems, in your life than opportunities, followed by seasons where we can't seem to find time to catch the blessings because God is pouring out so much blessings into our life. Seasons of passionate, growing love and tough seasons where love is tested. You ever had seasons like that? Seasons where you were more the leader and some seasons where you are being led. Seasons of great want and seasons of great blessing. Well, something is happening in the world right now and you can't put your finger on it, but you feel it. 
And I'm here to tell the human race that we've been living in a dream world, Neo. A world that has changed. In 2023, many of us woke up and we found ourselves in this brave new season, a season that we have never seen before. We look around and all of a sudden it was a different world, different rules were played by different games, head games. That song by Foreigner, Head Games, makes perfect sense for the season we're living in. It's crazy. News stations like CNN and NBC, they used to be trusted sources of truth have now turned into public relations firms that if you're smart and if you know people, you can trace them back to one corporation. I'm not gonna name the name of the corporation, it's so demonic. Universities, once trusted establishments of higher education, have become indoctrination centers where educators slowly and subliminally inject new generations as they crash onto the shores of the earth with woke ideologies contrary to the word of God. The world system is now pushing subliminal woke narratives and cartoons in children's books at the elementary school level. You can see them subliminally in Disney programs. With control of Congress, the Senate and the White House, it was easy in the last two years for this narrative to spread out. It was very easy. News stations, they used to be so trusted. NBC was lost to the enemy in the 90s. When actually it happened when David Brinkley retired. For those of you that don't know who he was, David was the last good Christian at that organization. He believed in every word of the Bible. But today Satan has full control of MSNBC where Satan has learned to reward anchors with fame, with money, with power, to spread a narrative to the weakest and most humble of our society. And they do it night after night. Embassy was lost when David retired in the 90s. But I'll tell you, when Satan got CNN, that blew my mind. Remember Bernard Shaw? He was such a devout Christian. I remember, I think he was a Catholic because Ted Turner actually came to Bernard Shaw's retirement party, which was on Ash Wednesday. And everybody on Ash Wednesday does the ashes on the face and Ted made a big, huge scene. A big, huge scene. And it was horrible. I think that there was an argument and one of the anchors actually retired. Someone told me that several anchors actually quit that evening. I don't know Ted Turner, but I know the spirit. He's the kind of guy that hates everything to do about Christ, everything to do about Jesus, everything to do about God until he needs God for something. And then he would get on his knees and pray. I am telling you, every single one of you, you have one of the fivefold giftings. Maybe it's an evangelist. Maybe it's a pastor. Maybe you're a prophet. God wants you to use your giftings right now. But Satan wants to use your giftings too. And Satan has been using everyone's giftings demonically for a long time with people that are associated with all those news organizations I just mentioned. Remember CNN voice? This CNN. Another Christian. That was James Earl Jones. That was the end of it, man. When Bernard retired, CNN, and just look at the lies, Michael Avenatti, COVID, and you're about to find out some stuff about COVID. And just so you know, it's April 1st, 2023. You're about to find out some stuff about COVID. The masks, the riots, stir it up. Let's stir it up. The world system is taking over and many of us, many of the new believers in the weak minded are getting assimilated in record numbers. Don't be surprised at the battle that you see. Don't be surprised of all of this. There's an epic battle raging in the world right now. And I'll tell you, everything that happens on the earth right now is a result of the spiritual battle that is happening in heaven. 
It happens in heaven and the residual aftershocks of the spiritual battle come down here on earth right now. And as a result, many of us have been pushed, kicked into a new season of life. This is a completely new season, man. It's not like any season you've ever seen. You can talk to the most, listen, I've spoken to rabbis in Jerusalem. I have spoken to Christians in Palestine. I have spoken to so many different denominations and everybody feels it. This is a new season and it's called the beginning of sorrows. It's a season that Jesus Christ of Nazareth warned us about. The key to getting through this season is recognizing where you are and why the world is the way that it is. Let's look at the facts. The spirit of liberalism has crept into every single segment of society and we see telltale signs. Crime has risen 12 to 32% across the board in cities infected by the spirit. And the lawmakers under the spirit's control refuse to track crimes like shoplifting and theft and rape and assault so that the statistics won't look so bad. Look at what Satan did to San Francisco, man. A city my wife and I loved. Gosh, we used to hold hands and walk along the water, go get a great meal. Look at what Satan did to my hometown of Seattle. Look at what the enemy has done to the city of angels, Los Angeles. Look at the Pfizer scam. Look at what they are teaching our kids. Look at the homeless crisis. You know what's amazing to me? I'll tell you what's something that's really amazing. Satan took black and white and made them fight each other with the system of the liberal news. The two most powerful cultures of Christians are battling each other. You can't walk in LA at night, or you can't even walk in San Francisco. In New York, forget it. The spirit is circling us, surrounding us. Rapes aren't being reported in schools. They're hiding all the crimes in schools. The liberal spirit wants to hide it so no one can notice, so that they could spread the narrative, taking over, and they're doing it worldwide. Australia is lost. Listen to the words of a preacher preaching to you from the middle of the Mojave Desert for free. Listen to the words of a preacher preaching to you for no money. In 2 Timothy 3, it says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. What are perilous times? Times like this, man. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents. Does that sound familiar, mom and dad? Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, without natural affection. You should study that. Truce breakers, know any of those, you self-employed guys? False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than the lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but completely denying its power. From those, the Bible says, turn away. For this sort are which crept into houses and led captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers, lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know any guys that go after like single moms and stuff that are desperate? 2000 years ago was prophesied that a six headed multicolored beast would rise from the sea and deceive many. It was prophesied, it would be used to destroy the believers. Actually, it would be used to destroy the work of the believers. Do you know any six-headed multicolored beasts that you go to to get all of your information from? Come on, wake up! Do you know who I'm talking about? I'll tell you what, with fake reviews on Google, you can completely destroy a business. 
And that's what they're doing right now. If they don't like what you say to them, they go and destroy you with fake reviews. None of this matters anymore. Why? Because you get to live through an amazing period in history. Listen, our generation did not get to see the Garden of Eden. Our generation did not get to break bread with Moses. Our generation didn't get to meet Abraham. Our generation did not get to follow Jesus through the old streets of Jerusalem. But I'll tell you something, this body of Christ in this generation gets to live through the most epic time in history, the beginning of sorrows, a time that was predicted by Jesus Christ. And let me tell you a little something, this new season we are in right now is unlike anything any previous generation has ever seen before. The beginning of the end, man. The seasons that we usually see as Christians. Oh, dude. The dry season. You call it spiritual dryness. You don't feel his presence. You pray for months and years and going through something, but you still don't want to put your sin on the altar. But, you know, you're still in a dry season. Everybody doesn't even see you change in church. You know, you're going, oh, you're still in that dry season. Keep praying. No, this isn't a dry season. Then there's the season of trials. (laughs) My favorite, Satan has kept me in this season forever. Well, if you're not living a blessed life, you must not be a true Christian. Beware of the brother who preaches the word that's living without trials. Because brothers like that are no threat to Satan. You become a threat to Satan, you're going to live, baby, in trials. Christians are not exempt from, from troubles. In fact, the Bible promises those. Say you're looked over by promotion. Our business is under prosecution. Our marriage is being ripped apart. We can't get our financial breakthrough. No, 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 no. This isn't the season of trials either. Oh my gosh. And I'll tell you, another season is like the season of loneliness. I don't know about you, but can I get an amen from anybody that's been lonely? The season of loneliness. You can be in a crowd full of people and feel lonely. You could be with your friends out at dinner and feel lonely. You can wake up in the arms of a stranger and feel lonely. No, no, no. This isn't the season of loneliness, is it? What about the happy season? Our favorite one, amen? Got a job that pays better. Maybe you just got married, bought that new house, taking your girl out on the town, enjoying that new home. Oh, the happy season's great. Oh, yes, it is. The happy season, the fun times. No, 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 no. This isn't the happy season. This is a bad season. And if you don't listen to the words of God, you're not going to survive it. I want to teach you how to survive the beginning of sorrows. Please heed the word of God that is coming to you from a preacher that has survived the psychedelic wars. We are living in the beginning of sorrows. We are living in the beginning of sorrows. And Jesus prophesied about this. And it was very, very powerful. And I'm going to grab my Bible so I can go read it to you. Let's read Matthew 24, okay? Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, Master, when will this happen? When will the end come? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name saying, saying, I am the Messiah. They will deceive many and you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. These things must all take place, but the end will not follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all of this, all of this is only the beginning of sorrows. You're going to be arrested. You're going to be persecuted. In Galatians 6 through 9, it says, Let us not be weary in doing well, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Don't give up. Don't give up right now. You have been living in a dream world, 
Listen to your teacher. Don't give up. Don't give up, girl. And let me warn you guys, quit fighting your battles on social media. You're making Christianity to look foolish. It's bad enough that we live under a denominational curse with 21,684 as of this morning denominations. People worship cactuses. People hold snakes and jump around. I know one cult that actually dug up some gold tablets supposedly in Manhattan. And now there's temples around the world and they're raking it in, raking it in. The denominational curse, man. If you'd have asked Jesus Christ what a Presbyterian was, (laughs) you wouldn't have been able to answer that question. How about a Catholic? Jesus, what's a Catholic? Don't you guys get it? When you see the truth about COVID, man, don't give up. When your seven-year-old comes home with questions about other genders, don't give up. When the taxes on your home are $24,000 a year, don't give up. When the streets become war zones, don't give up. When you have to step over herpidemic needles on the street, don't give up. When they ruin your business on Google with fake reviews and Google won't remove them because you don't have a rainbow picture in your bakery, don't give up. When they make you feel strange because you're attracted to the opposite sex, don't give up, man. How are we going to survive this? We're going to keep our eyes on Jesus. Quit fighting our battles on social media, man. You're never going to win. True Christians don't fight with each other. Satan's army walks in perfect unity, man. (laughs) Dude, they're like 100,000 strong marching in perfect unity. While Christians argue with each other. The Holy Spirit is grieved by the greed that is running through the church today. I know pastors that have more than three private jets. I know pastors that actually pay their worship people to worship God. Can you imagine? And they they cling to that one scripture Well, Paul said, get a job. And that's what I do. I get a job and I work and I preach. And that's why they don't like me. And that's okay. Because one of these days, when we wake up, we're going to be so powerful when every denomination comes under one umbrella. I guarantee you, for you fancy worship leaders out there that are getting $200,000, $300,000, $400,000 a year, Pastors, let someone in the congregation that loves Jesus worship for free. Which music do you think the Lord wants to hear? One out of love or one out of money? I want to make it. I want to make it. I want to lead as many people to Christ as I can. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Quit trying to win the war, the psychedelic war on Facebook. Start attending on Fire for Christ churches. Quit with the social media junk. Shut your accounts down. Quit worrying about winning the argument. Win the soul. Win the soul. Because when you lead someone to Christ and get them into a spirit-filled church where they're preaching the word for free and they're worshiping for free out of the love of Christ, it's an anointing even when Christians from other churches come in to an anointed spirit-filled church, tears run down their face. They feel the Holy Spirit. Start using the fivefold gifting that God gave you to lead as many people to Christ as you can. When Christ ascended, he broke the church into five pieces, man. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers. Want to really serve the Lord? Repent and use your gifting, your one gifting that God gave you. 
right now in the beginning of sorrows to lead as many people to Christ as you can. And when they get hit by the love of Christ, they wake up and then they too can see what I'm preaching to you today. It's easier to wake them up and then they can go out and lead other people to Christ. Satan has completely ravished an entire generation we can actually see what the army looks like now. Look at what he did with that awkward age from nine to 14. Look at what he did. Isn't that horrible? Lead them to Christ. When a soul is saved, they get the wisdom from the Holy Spirit and then they see as we do. The world cannot see like we see. They think we're weak-minded and ignorant. But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you begin to see the world for what it really is, you realize that we have been living in a dream world, Neo. You're going to be unplugged from the world. You need to get into the game, man. You need to become a Christian and start leading people to Christ. And if you don't know Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you can know him right now. You can get on your knees right now and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Become a Christian, get into the game, save souls, start washing the sin off. Back in the old days, they grab a bull, set it up there on the altar, you were good. No man, God doesn't want the bull. He doesn't want the goat, he doesn't want the bird. He wants your sin. He wants your sin. Carve off the Jack Daniels and throw that up for Jesus. Carve off the cocaine and throw that up for Jesus. Carve off the weed and throw that up there for Jesus and see what happens in your life. If you really want to get ahead, carve off some serious sin out of your life, like the Jack Daniels, the weed, the cocaine. Throw that up there on the altar and watch God throw a blessing on you that you will not be able to handle. So get off of social media, repent, get on fire for Christ, and start leading souls. And if you're ever in the Seattle area, you can come to our cool church. We have epic pizza on Thursdays or chicken or something. And there's real worship. You're going to love it. And there's an amazing word. And there's fellowship. And I'm, I'm not one of these guys that, it's not a temple, okay? I'm not a king. Other people preach there. We've got pastors from Iran preaching there. It's a good body of Christ, amen. And if you feel the need to give, know that every single penny of the money you send does not go to people who are paid. I'll never take a dime to preach the gospel because I love you. And Paul said, get a job. And that's what I did, amen. God bless you. And thank you for listening to this epic sermon called Seasons. See you guys later. Oh.